Good morning. Welcome again to the Bethany Associate Reformed Presbyterian Church as we gather together to worship the Lord our God, to enjoy His presence, and to be taught by Him from His Word. And so this morning we come uh, to Luke 22, because here on Wednesday we are taking a word we don't understand, expanding on a little bit, so that we can better live as believers in Jesus Christ. So this morning, our word is intercession. And to help us define that, we're going to go to Luke 22. And so let's go ahead and go to God and ask his help for this time. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give thanks again for the glory of your name, the blessings of your truth, and for the way that you remind us every day that we are sinners, though we fall short, though we react in ways we shouldn't. To God, you are the God of peace and of comfort and of joy of thanksgiving, and we, dear God, are to be at rest in your grace. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this morning we turn to Luke 22, and we will be reading verses 31 through 34. Hear the word of the Lord. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. But he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Then he said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster shall not crow this day before you will deny three times that you know me. Amen. Now, this question of intercession is what relationship or how does it work that Christ intercedes for us? We need to backtrack a little bit and get to some foundational things. Now, the reason why Jesus intercedes for us uh, can be found in uh, the book of Ephesians. Now, Ephesians chapter 1 is a uh, beautiful testimony to God's grace. We read there that blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. So, The first thing we need to know about intercession is who does the intercession? It's Christ. And how does Christ become our intercessor? Well, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. So here we are told that we become a part of Christ. We become a part of the blessings of our union with Christ by the redemption purchased through his blood. But how do we get redeemed? Step back a second. The foundation of all of this is the eternal promise of predestination and election. We come to Christ because God first loved us. And coming to Christ, we have benefits which flow from that redemption purchased uh, by Christ. We have been made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure and purposed in himself. We also hear in verse 11, in him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him, who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. In him you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having been believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purpose possession to the praise of his glory. So again, Our hope in all of our Christian life is the predestinating grace of Jesus Christ. He has been made ours by the decree of the Father, by the inward redeeming application of the finished work of Christ by the Holy Spirit. So we see when we come to talk about intercession, we're not just talking about Jesus. We're talking about how all three members of the Trinity are involved in this process. Now, in a passage we read from Luke 22, Jesus again says, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. Well, if you've read the Bible before, you know that somebody else uh, is in this position. That was Job. 
Remember? Uh, you know, God offered Job to Satan, and Satan took and sifted him. And Job maintained in his weakness the blessings of God throughout the testimony. And what allowed Job to come through the end? Well, as we talked a little bit yesterday in the Tuesday uh, lesson, we, or Job came through, and we do too, by the power of God, by the one who made the heavens and the earth, to the praise of his marvelous grace. And so Peter, who's about to be sifted through the temptation of the evil one, who's going to deny Jesus three times, how does he come out the other side? He comes out the other side because he's united to Jesus Christ by faith. He is united to Jesus. The Holy Spirit watches over him even in his sin and allows the devil no power to corrupt or destroy. And when we talk about this, again, the obvious corollary at this point in the gospel is Judas. Judas is sifted by the devil, but he fails and is destroyed. Why is that the case? Well, of course, Scripture tells us that Judas was made for such a time as this. Peter was made for a different purpose. And so the mystery of the will of God as to why we believe and why another doesn't is purely because of the grace of God. And that is the joy of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. That's what intercession means. Intercession is the promise that we will never be forsaken, never forgotten, never left to our own devices. But through the means of grace, through the preaching of the word, through prayer, through the ringing of the word, through Christian fellowship, we will be encouraged towards holiness. We will be made ready for the day of Christ's returning. And so, brothers and sisters, as we think about this word intercession, again, there's a lot going on there. But intercession is the act of predestination daily in the life of a believer. So do not fear this present evil world. Do not be anxious for anything. Why? Because you're held in the arms of God Almighty. Consider this today. Be at peace in the knowledge of the intercession of Christ for you. At the cross, and as he has ascended to the heavenly throne room, as he sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, he judges the quick and the dead every day. And the good news is, is that you are neither quick nor dead, but you are slowly alive in Christ. Take care. God bless, and have a wonderful week.